Sunday morning sermon. Because uh, we know we're going to get the best. There isn't the best. Oh, you're not recording this now, are you? Anyways, uh, so it's, it's good. We've been blessed. We had Matt. Sister Corky, um, all preaching their first on a Sunday morning. And So I got to service this way. Father of the Son, Holy Spirit. Why did I do that? Are you Catherine? Are you Anglican? Uh, no. Uh, the focus uh, on this side. The great hymn of the faith that talks about Trinity is hymn number 41, Holy. It's going to be after tell. That's okay, because I can do this. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. 
you have
It's the last kid. It's the last kid of, of the season. And uh, yes, it's when? It's August. The weekend of August the 12th. Mm -hmm. We have our, our daily vacation Bible school here. But uh, so a little bit of a wait. So there is going to be some food. Hot dog.
The stuff downstairs called
Someday, if back then it seems so real, then I just can't help but to feel how much the closer You need to. You need to bring that up a little bit, Joel. It's not registering. So I get this is the get get out wearing. You need to bring this. You need to bring this up a little bit. You got the green light on, Joe. Yep. There we go. There we go.
So this including getting some clothes that we had laid out last night, feeding our kids breakfast, and ensuring everybody was buckled in their car seats or buckled into the booster seats. Of course, making sure we didn't forget anything. There, but like most circumstances, there's only so much preparation and planning you can do. We don't always know what our future holds. So for example, this morning we hit the I had to stop and put in batteries. And then we really didn't have no future help, but as Pastor Bruce said, I showed up and carried it all my gear to United Church and realized. But we simply did our part and we let God do the rest. And it's on that note that I want to begin this morning. So if we can, I'd like all of us to turn our Bibles this morning to Acts chapter 16. We're going to begin at verse 1. Acts 16. Universal. To Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewess and a believer, and whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well the circumcised, but they all knew his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, to Jerusalem for the people to obey. So churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. And traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia. But the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. During the night, Paul begging him, come over come and help us. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the I began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth in the city. The Lord opened. If you can come and see. Decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. In turn, the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. To deliver and be well received. But then the Holy Spirit keeps them from preaching in the province of Asia. Okay, no big deal. They press on. But then when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Mysia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. A second time, the Spirit has interceded and changed plans. But these men are faithful, and they accept those changes. Then, during the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. They followed that prompting of the Spirit. They prepared and headed to Macedonia on the Sabbath in the name of Lydia. The Bible tells us that the Lord opened her heart to hearing your message. Her and her household are baptized. So far, all is going as planned. 
The gospel is reaching new hearts, and more people are turning their lives to God. But then, a twist of events would soon follow. If we continue reading at verse 16, once when we were going to the place of prayer, by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future, she earned a great deal of money from her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. When he orders the slave, they seize Paul and Silas and drag them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are but it is unlawful for us Romans to accept our On receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Then, while Silas were praying, God, and the other prisoners were praying. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, so are you to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved in your household. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, Jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy. God, he. When it was daylight, release these men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave, go in peace. Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly, even though we are Roman citizens. And threw us in prison. And now, and now do they want to get rid of us quietly? Let them come themselves and escort us out. <coughs> the officers reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul saw us Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas They chose to continue to follow God's call in their lives. The conversion of the jailer and the jailer, they persevered. And say, the Lord would face with those situations, sadly, and likely in all honesty, our answer would be to flee. And why? Because the situation is uncomfortable. 
because it's an uncertain outcome, and because we'd rather play it safe than risk the odds. In our own world these days, I'm always hearing complaints everywhere, it seems. Complaints about what is being Complaints about the way they speak. Complaints about how the government is handling things. Complaints about how God doesn't seem to be being put first in our world anymore, or nation, or country. Even though this country and nation was founded on the Bible and God's Word. But do you know what I don't often see? Someone stepping up to make a difference. Sadly, I have to be honest and to say I tend to complain a lot about things also. But, like a lot of you, I also tend to take that easy mode. But I'm learning more and more that if I better be ready to stand up and make a difference. Amen. If I don't like the outcome, I need to be part of that solution. During the heart of COVID-19, brave men and women went to our country's capital to our freedoms in the country. Yeah. Amongst all the closures and the limitations that were being brought forward in those crazy times. They went to say that things were not being handled maybe the greatest. They went to try to bring a difference. When was the last time that we stood up for our faith and stood up to defend our Heavenly Father? Stood up to share the gospel with unbelievers? With that neighbor who gets on our nerves? With that woman who dresses in not some, in some not so greatest clothes down the street? With the cashier who is ringing in your grocery Let's all turn again in our Bibles, but this time to the book of Mark, chapter 13. So Mark, chapter 13, we'll begin at first verse. As he was leaving the temple, one of his, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, privately, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch. Many will come in my name and claim Such things must be These are the beginning. You must go to local councils and flock to the city. you at that time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rebel against their parents, and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it is for nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those will be days of distress, unequal when God created the world until now and never to be. In that court, those days, no one would survive. At that time, 
or look, there he is. Do not believe it. That. If that were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days, following that distress, the stars will fall. The, sorry. Following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly forces will be shaken. The heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will be in clouds with great power and glory. Angels and God and his elect. I learned this lesson from the fig tree. When we see these things happening, we know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you that this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things. The earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in You do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster is on. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find him sleeping. That I say, I say to everyone. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1 to 11, it also says, Now, brothers and sisters, about times and days, if you know very well that the day of peace and safety, destruction, and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep. But let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, sleep at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting our faith and love as a breastplate, and hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another to build each other up, just as in fact we are doing. No one knows the day, nor the hour when Christ will return. He will come like a thief in the night. We have to be prepared. I want you all to look around you. The person you left, and now the person at your right. Even if they're a stranger to you, if Christ were to return in the next few minutes, would you want to see them in paradise of heaven with you? Or would you wonder where they went? Or maybe it's vice versa. You expected to see them in heaven, only that isn't where you arrived. If Christ can return at any moment, then we need to be prepared. Jesus commanded us to go share the gospel. He didn't say, He said, therefore, that means now. If we aren't going to share about Him, then we can't expect our friends to be there. Jesus is our good friends, and we've been told about Christ. I don't know about you. I started thinking about those whom I stand with. All my very good friends, some that I know are saved, but also some that I know are unsaved. Even I must admit that I have to take my own medicine. I have for too long played it safe and not shared the gospel when I had the opportunity to do so. But I want to see all my friends in heaven. I want to see all my family in heaven. And it breaks my heart to think that some might not get there. But at the same time, it's not just about reaching outward. We also need to take a moment 
to reflect inward? Are we ourselves ready? Is our life where it needs to be? As the little saying goes, you can't fill a broken glass if the picture itself is broken. Now you may also be thinking, but Joel, you haven't met my friends. It's a hard topic to bring up. What will they think of me? Will they even want to talk to me, let them associate with me after I've brought it up? My answer to you is simply a question. Is it worth it? Is it worth keeping quiet and risking them being lost forever? Or is it worth it to tell them on the chance that they might hear the gospel for possibly the first time and receive it? It's a risk that only you can take. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter that we always need to be prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have. In the book of 2 Timothy, in chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, it reads, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, and giving his charge, preach the word, prepare, be prepared in season, in every season, correct, rebuke, and encourage, with great patience and careful instruction. The time will come when people will not put up the sun doctrine. Instead, to see their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, into your hardship, do the work of an evangelist of your ministry. From I am already being poured out like a drink offering in the time of my I fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me but also to all who have longed for his hearing. God has promised us that if we do his will and do all that he's commanded of us, that on that day when you have fought the good fight, you have finished the race, that there will be in store for you the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to you on that day. Just as Paul prepared to go minister, even without knowing the outcome, we too need to prepare, minister, and be ready. I get it. When I was younger, I hated to speak in front of crowds. Let alone pray in public. Yet here I am today. Yeah. Amen. It wasn't easy either. It took pushing myself on God's strength to get where I am today. And I'm not perfect either. I make mistakes too. I was saying during the sermon, like you all, there are some things that I need to work on to get better also. But the best part is that we don't have to do that alone. We have got to help us all of it. If David could face Goliath, if Joshua and the army of God Jericho, and if Esther could go warn the king, even knowing that in that cir circumstance she could be killed, then certainly we can lean on that same strength and do what God has called us to do and prepare. I mentioned I had to prepare myself to come here. Preparation is key. If it makes it easier, be like me and make yourself a list. My list was things to remember to pack in my van before I drove here this morning. But your list would just be simple steps of how you were going to go from here moving forward. Step one could be pray. Maybe step two is asking God to share with you whom he wants you to share the gospel with. Maybe step three is a step of reflection of where does my own life need improvement? Create your steps and put that plan into action. We close with one verse, and that's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And it tells us, For I know the plan I have for you, that is the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God is with us. God is with you. I want to close with a special music piece.
piece that wraps up what I spoke about this morning. As I sing this final special piece, I want you to take the time to reflect on the question, are you yourself ready for the call?
the believer in the Lord and you, the follower of Jesus Christ, ready for the judgment seat of Christ. And for those who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, that they might get ready. Get ready by accepting you and living for you. We pray, Father, this day that wherever we would go, we would go, Lord, with you and go with the message to bring and make a difference in the lives of others. May we go in the name of God the Father who has given us his grace through Jesus Christ whose love gave us the cross by the Holy Spirit who is the divine comfort. 